Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with even more Traveler content. Okay, we're going to do some arts and crafts today for my Traveler campaign. Uh, as you know, we're going to be rebooting it soon. Thursday we'll be uh, making some more characters, and then hopefully we'll be able to start playing pretty soon. All right, now back in the day, back in the long time ago machine, uh, Steve Jackson put out these floor plans, uh, deck plans for ships, and uh, you know they're they're multi. I go ahead and open this up for you real quick. Uh, yeah, they were deck plans for ships, and they give you a little bit of the stats, and there's squares on one side and hexes on the other, and basically it was just super awesome, and. Included with these deck plans, you know, like this one here is the Dragon Class System Defense Boat. Included with these plans was something called Cardboard Heroes. You can kind of see it displayed there on the on the back side of the back cover. But now these Cardboard Heroes came on these cardstock uh, sheets and you would cut them out and you would fold them to make character miniatures or miniatures that you could use on those deck plants and they would fold in half so you have a front side and a back side and then the bottoms of them would fold together and you'd glue them together or what have you and you would have like this little teepee or this little tent right so uh, with a figure so you can just stand like that and you just move them around on your map okay that seems seems pretty nice but it's actually kind of flimsy these characters tend to fall over they tend they don't have any weight to them they're super light which is kind of a good thing but they are super light and they fall over and they're not sturdy at all you could squish them by accident you have to be very gentle with these things so I've decided to pursue another way to portray them on the tabletop okay so we're gonna go ahead and what I've done is I've taken the cardboard heroes sheets and I've printed them out on my own cardstock, right? Because what I was going to do was print them on cardstock, you know, and then cut them out and basically make, make more of these. But if you notice, I printed them on this cardstock, which I thought was an awesome cardstock, but I'm not sh sure if it's showing you the color. This is kind of a gray right uh, this is white paper and this is cards the gray card stock that I bought I thought it was buying white I bought gray okay so it's still great I'll still use it for other things so I printed it on the gray it came out okay let me pull one of these out I printed them out on the cardstock. It seems okay. I could cut these out. I could use these, but I wanted it to be even brighter white. So I've decided I was going to just print it on white paper that I've had. I've got some on my Epson printer. I have some white paper. Now, to make it sturdier, because that cardstock I found, I think I might have one in here. That cardstock. Figures, here we go. That cardstock figure, here's a pilot. I folded it in half. It's su it's even thinner and lighter than the one Steve Jackson printed. Uh, and I want to fold them so that they are straight up and down and not tented. And then I was going to take a slaughter base, like a GW slaughter base, around 25 millimeter slot a base and I was just going to slide the model up up through the bottom of the base and I was going to let the slot a base hold the figure in place and then you could just move it around like that and this would be a lot more sturdy but this is too flimsy it's not thick enough to grip the slot a base 
So another thing I was doing was putting extra layers of cardstock in, in there to try to thicken it up a little bit to get it to fit in the slaughter base. Still not happy. Then I remembered what my buddy Mike was doing. He was taking backer board, cutting out, he, he uses a lot of paper miniatures, and he will glue paper to it, then cut it out, and it will be as thick as this backer board. And then he would slide them down into Litco bases. These bases are like acrylic, but their slot isn't straight like those GW slaughter bases. They're curved. So what it does is it applies tension to this without it having to be too thick. And so I tested, tested this out. This would actually fit into a slaughter base super easy. And with the paper on top of it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna thicken it up considerably. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm just going to take a couple of these Marines. I'm going to cut them out and then I'm going to glue them to this board. Then we're going to cut the board out and I'm going to show you exactly the process. And then what we'll do is we'll mount them in a couple of these round slot of base, these, uh, C, these GW slot of bases temporarily because those Litco bases I should be getting them in the mail any day now. And when I do, I'm sure I'll do another video showing you. But something cool about these ones I printed or the Steve Jackson ones, you've got a fighter, you've got air rafts. You have, you have like air rafts that you can use. Uh, some of, what's really cool on some of these, like Vargers and Oslon in and out of, in and out of vac suits, you got, all these little itty bitty pieces here are like weapons and bags and gear and gizmos. Now, I don't know if I'll ever use those, uh, but if I wanted to litter a table with them, I could. Um, I've got a Verushi, a Bwop. I don't think I've got, I don't think any of these are, are a Hiver though, but I've got Oslon, guys with his like engineers. Yeah, it's all cool. I got this cargo container box. I could print this piece up here like a hundred times and make a bunch of cargo boxes for uh, a ship or something. Oh, this one. This one has kids, passengers. Yeah. One of these sets, I think it's this one right here. It's pretty cool. It's got passenger and his identical twin says hijacker. Passenger hijacker, passenger hijacker, passenger hijacker. So the players don't know if he's a hijacker or if he's a passenger. I think that's awesome. All right, well, let's take a look at this and let's start cutting away. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these Marines right here. I'm only going to do a few of them so you can see. But uh, they have, remember, they have the bases that fold up underneath. Well, we're not going to even need those, right? We only need the model. But we'll need a piece, like a, a section of it, maybe three millimeters, to go through and stick into the slaughter base. And what's really cool about these models, they have names of who they are underneath. So what I plan to do is just chop off their, their right below their name so I can retain, so I can have their name associated with their model. Gone. Okay, now you can see I use a cutting board and I also use a straight edge to get perfect straight lines. So I put the bottom of this on a line and then I'm gonna use my outer edges over here to kind of guide my line to make it straight across and not crooked or at an angle or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this all the way through. Okay, 
So now, because this is the front face and this is the back face, I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to lay that down as if they were glued together. I'm going to line up the tops. Perfect. And then I'm going to take my straight edge. Line it up with the base. Okay. Because what that'll do is it'll give me the same height of the top and the bottom. There we go. And so that'll be the back side, right? So when I glue these together, there will be enough there will be enough room on the bottom of these figures to sit in a slotted base. All right, now before I start cutting these, I'm going to lay them on here. And look at the, the perfect length, too. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to lay these on here, and then I'm going to cut it out. But before I do that, I'm going to glue these down. Now, I glue these down using Elmer's glue, an Elmer's glue stick, right? Backer board. the figure along with the straight line that I got cut there and then I just let that glue down on there just like that so far simple enough right let's get it into the corners make sure we cover the top edge And we take our figures, lay them down right on the card. And you got to be careful because you don't want the, the backs to be off center or whatever from your front edge because when you go to cut them into their individual figures, you want to make sure that they align properly. All right, now before we get too far, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right along the bottom edge of the paper. And I'm cutting through the backer board and cutting all these figures off into a strip. Now, backer board's pretty thick. I usually have to cut three or four times to get all the way through. Even when I'm using the Exacto 2.0, I usually still have to cut three or four times. off to the side. And now we've got our strip here and this is pretty pretty sturdy. Our strip just making sure it's nice and smooth. Everything looks good, not too dirty. Okay, there's a little peel right there. Must not have put enough glue on it right there.
You can touch it up with a little bit of Elmer's or tacky glue. What I'm going to do is just rub my fingers across this glue here and then using my fingers to apply some glue. I'm just going to push it down. And I think that's good. Okay. Those are my Imperial Marines for Traveler. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them. In my opinion, that's a little bit too much room on the right side of this model. There are yellow lines in there. You just can't see them. They're so light. Uh, so I'm just going to eyeball it and cut it the way I want to. Because that's who I am. I'm going to trim off a little bit of this excess on the right, I think. I think there's a little excess. Remember? About three times to get through that. That brings that figure a lot closer to his data pad. Okay. What I try to do is line the bottom of this with a line on my cutting board. And that way when I go to cut along, and then I line it up to cut up against another one of these lines. That way I get a 90 degree angle. Just like that. And these are the only three I'm going to do for you on camera. got our three miniatures right here right you got the officer and you got a couple of Imperial Marines with him and then you can see the name underneath right you got officer and Imperial Marines and then if I flip it on the back you basically see like this guy's got his rifle right and then you flip it over and he's got the back right you guys are in battle dress you know so, and they're camouflaged, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And then, you know, you got this Imperial Officer. I don't know what the focus is looking like on this. Uh, okay. And then with that, okay, just temporarily, I've got some Warhammer slaughter bases and you can see that these are they fit in there nice and e you know nice and easy maybe a little bit too much so huh all right so we got our Warhammer slaughter bases here and then we take our officer and we just drop them in there we got a we got a Imperial Marine, we just drop him down 
in there. We got another Imperial Marine. We just drop him down in there. And then don't glue them to their bases. Because if I need to put a civilian or a Varg or an Avlon, and I'll have a stack of these, and then I'll just pull one out and I'll get a new one and I'll just plug them in and then we'll have another figure. And then they can move around. Um, but when I get those Litco bases, those Litco bases are round, but they've got a curved uh, slot instead of a straight slot. So when I put those guys in, there will be tension. And so when I move them around, they won't like pop out of their bases. All right, so when we get those curved bases in, I'll show you what that looks like. And let me go ahead and continue cutting up my Space Marines and all my other figures. And I'll see you next time.